Hi everyone, Jonathan, back once more. And <laughs> this almost speaks for itself in a way, but then I'm gonna rabbit on for a number of minutes. So in that way, it doesn't. It is, of course, if you don't know what it is, um, we'll have to send you a reading list. This is a Heckler & Koch MP5 submachine gun made famous by, among other things, the SAS, uh, by Die Hard, and for some of us anyway, by the game Half-Life, the original Half-Life in particular, although also the remake, Black Mesa, which does a, a quite a nice rendition of effectively this gun. Now this is obviously not from, not from a video game. Um, if you'd like to find out about its, real, uh, it, its not real life counterpart, um, GameSpot, who we do a lot of work with, as I'm sure you know, will be covering this very shortly in uh, one of their episodes. So keep an eye on their channel in the next few days um, to a week, whenever that, that actually drops. But it's well worth checking out. It, so it has its own sort of virtual history as a concept, but actually it's coincidence. I mean, sounds the reason it's coincidence, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> there's a, there's a, a, another sort of touchstone here from pop culture, which is the, probably not Arnold Schwarzenegger's best movie, End of Days from 1999. So Half-Life comes out in 1998, End of Days comes out the year after, and this thing comes out round about the year 2000, uh, maybe more like 2001, something like that. And I'm talking here about this bit, the bit on the front, the grenade launcher. Um, it is a, a, a modular accessory for this famous MP5 submachine gun. Nine millimeter, nine by, nine by 19 parabellum. Um, this, uh, I hmm, can't be 100% sure of this, but I suspect that we were supplied with just, or the pattern room, just before it was handed over to the, to us here at the Royal Armouries. I think we received the launcher. Uh, the, the MP5 is just an MP5. Uh, so we won't go into too much detail on that. It, it happens to have um, the uh, Navy trigger group on it. Throwing that out there for, for the people that recognize that. So the, the, the key bit is the launcher. As you can see, it sticks out further than the actual barrel of the gun. Um, you might see, you'll see photos of this online from, from people that have um, sort of put that out there. You might see this attached, apparently attached to an MP7. I am about as sure as I can be that that is photoshopped. <laughs> Don't believe that that was ever, ever offered and it looks even more ridiculous. Sorry, I feel bad saying this looks ridiculous because it's one of the more awesome things I've ever seen. <laughs> An MP5 with a grenade launcher is a bit silly uh, in principle, but apparently not so silly that um, there wasn't potential demand for it. So the, the company um, Istec, I-S-T-E-C, Istec, who are still around, still making uh, military hardware, mainly mounts um, for, for machine guns and things, but also uh, smoke discharges for vehicles, which is similar technology to the launcher here. Um, they're, they're based in Hertfordshire. So UK company, German submachine gun, UK grenade launcher. They clearly identified that there was at least a potential for this kind of launcher. Um, they developed a whole series, the ISL 200 series. This is the ISL 201, which is designed not only for the HK MP5, the primary application for this would actually have been the HK-53, which is the same gun essentially in 5.56 rifle caliber. So, arguably silly with a pistol caliber weapon because the effective range of pistol ammunition is, well, even on an excellent weapon like this, no more than 200 meters, I think it's safe to say. And your, well, your grenade launcher has a fair explosive effect when it when the grenade lands. So um, close range weapon, dangerous explodey <laughs> accessory. In principle, not a great mix. Great for movies, great for games. Um, now, um, you might speculate a, a special forces connection because um, if anyone would need to put a lot of automatic firepower down at relatively close range and risk firing grenades at somewhat somewhat closer range than you might otherwise um, or use the grenade launcher as more of a standoff weapon and have the um, SMG for closer up. If anyone has a niche for that it's going to be your special operations forces. So what's apparently quite silly in principle first of all it's not just for this weapon and secondly 
um, it might have an application. So let's have a proper a proper look at it. We've got a, well, first of all, how do you open it? There is a latch on the left-hand side, this lever here. Push up and pivot. <laughs> Insert dated friends reference here. So this is a, this is a pretty common feature now with under barrel grenade launchers because it allows you to load uh, more easily, quite frankly, than having to tilt something like an M203 over to the side, it's your classic Vietnam to current-ish vintage under barrel grenade launcher where you'd have to slide that forward and kind of either know where to, to shove the round or sort of look. With a side opening uh, launcher, it's just a lot more convenient. You could have this set up, I gather, to open to the left or to the right. This one's set up to open to the left. Trigger mechanism sits behind it. Oh, it is it is rifled, by the way, uh, without pointing that at you. <laughs> Some people get uh, nervous about that. Um, you should be able to hopefully see that it is rifled. So 40 millimeter, 40 by 46 millimeters is the um, designation of this round. There are longer 40 millimeter grenades. This is the designed or chambered, in fact, for the standard shorter round, uh, which is a, a very clever, what's known as high low pressure system where uh, it's able to handle, essentially handle the recoil of the round with a sort of um, bleed through system inside the case. I won't go into the technical detail of that, but suffice to say, you can comfortably fire this from the shoulder. Now, <laughs> In the video game that I, <laughs> I referenced more heavily in the GameSpot video, um, you don't use a shoulder stock. That's pretty standard popular culture fare. But in reality, you would in fact have the butt stock out and you would be able to aim and, and take the recoil in the shoulder quite, quite easily. It's a sort of um, M79 smashed into an MP5, if you know that, that grenade launcher. And in fact, there is a, uh, we have a picture of this. There is a standalone buttstock and grip unit that you could convert this to a standalone launcher with. Um, there was also a, in the product range in sort of, uh, around about 2001 to 2010, something like that is when this was definitely available from Istec. I, I don't know if they might still make some if you asked, um, but as far as I know, it's not, not available now. They did offer as part of the range, a standalone launcher as well. Those have come um, sort of back into fashion, sort of. In some armed forces, um, soldiers might carry a, a rifle and have a separate grenade launcher with its own buttstock and grip for launching grenades, and they put that away and they get out their um, primary weapon. For a good few decades, the way to do it was under barrel, and many forces still do. And they're con often convertible as well, as this one is. Um, so we have as well a safety. If I turn it over for you, you'll see it is this lever, which is ambidextrous, i.e. it's on both sides. So that's on safe. That, not from that angle, but <laughs> that will allow you to pull through and that's it firing. And it's just a, it's a standard center fire system. So if I show you the, the breech face, that's where the base of the cartridge would sit, and there is a firing pin in the middle, and we might even see that if I just fire it off a couple of times. That hits the primer, fires the round, and away you go. In case you're wondering about materials, the uh, housing here, which... Um, we May as well pop this off. Attaches just like the normal MP5 handguard. So the the mount here is machined aluminium or aluminium if you prefer. The breech face is steel. The trigger mechanism and trigger guard are steel. Let's see there how that attaches on the back. And there's your lever for opening it up that we looked at just now. There is a steel barrel liner, effectively. And if you can see, there's a difference there between there and there. And this outer casing is polymer. So that helps keep weight 
down and is replaceable if it gets worn or if you want to change the shape of your grip, because essentially this is now your grip for your we for the primary weapon as well. And in fact, um, some of the promotional images, they're not great quality, unfortunately, but um, we might be able to show you, have a, a more M203 style ribbed covering on here. So it gives you a bit more purchase than this slippery uh, version, but it does have a finger stop so you don't actually nade your fingers. Um, <laughs> sorry, a bit of video game terminology creeping in there. So it, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, not too much to say. Uh, may as well give you a view inside the mount there. Now, the before you get grenade launchers mounting to um, Picatinny rails uh, on the bottom of, of the, the rail there as the standard way of mounting, you needed a, a customized mount for everything. This is obviously set up for the H and K push pin system. Great, you know, it's hanging off the off the body of the gun there at the back and mounting to at the front. It's just how the handguard attaches. So um, st uh, stable enough. The one thing it's missing, and I've not seen any evidence of this other than on the standalone launcher, is any sighting system because you can't just use the, the uh, SMG sights to aim the grenade launcher. So that's that's curious. Um, Istex still offer today a uh, grenade launcher site. Um, it's what's used, I believe, on the SA-80 GL in the British Army. But I can't see any provision here for the sighting system. Uh, I did contact Istec. Um, they're very busy doing other things, and uh, I think everyone involved back then uh, may have moved on. But if I find out any more, I'll be adding it to our collection record for the future. One sort of um, fun fact, if you were, if you served in the British Army between a certain number of years, is that the standalone version of this, you'll have seen this in our, in our image, the pistol grip for this is, is taken from the SLR, from the L1A1 self-loading rifle. So a tiny little bit of familiarity, uh, or at least there would have been for a lot of guys back in sort of 2001. Uh, just to quickly run through, this is from Jane's Infantry Weapons, uh, the only place you'll see the full range listed. Uh, this was in um, 2000, the 2011-12 issue, and I think it's not in the later ones. So that probably gives us an idea of when this um, stopped being ov overtly offered for sale, shall we say. So the ISL-201 is the MP5 slash HK-53 launcher. That's 40 millimeters. There's an I there was an ISL-202, which was the same launcher in slightly smaller 37 millimeter, which is um, basically across the board less lethal. So that's for launching um, polymer projectiles for riot control or gas, tear gas, that kind of thing. The, the rule of thumb is you keep 40 millimeter for the lethal stuff <laughs> and 37 for the non-lethal, and you don't really want to mix those up for obvious reasons. It's then the ISL-203 that is the, uh, despite the similarity to M203, um, is the 40 millimeter launcher with its own telescoping button pistol grip, as mentioned. There's a 204, which is the 37 mil version of that. Uh, there's the, this is where it gets even more interesting, I think, there's the ISL-274, which was developed um, for the Oster F-88, so the Australian Army's bullpup assault rifle. Um, in, I think this was, I'm a little hazy on the details, but I think this was in between them adopting the uh, M203 PI, which is what they became their standard launcher for their, for their rifle. I think they were looking at other options. And then later on for the EF-88 or F-90, there was um, kind of competitive trials to, to replace that 203. So, um, well, I guess a spoiler alert is the Australian Army did not adopt the Steyr Org version of this, or AUG rather, um, but it, there was one developed for it. And the 275 was essentially this launcher, but adapted for the M16 slash Canadian C7 rifle. And the idea was that they could adapt that by changing the shape of the mount to whatever 556 rifle your country happens to be operating. So this was a, a contender in the market to replace the M203, is the, the sort of short version of the story. Um, however, they did have 
the uh, ability to swap barrels. So although you would keep your 37 millimeter for your less lethal, as mentioned, you could, I guess, save money by purchasing the mounting solution and then different barrels and you'd swap out the whole barrel unit so everything's still safe. You're not going to accidentally blow up um, a street or something if you're, if you're trying to just put uh, tear gas out or something like that. So in theory, a whole family of, of launchers uh, in practice, um, as mentioned, the, the Australians went with something else. I believe they're moving from the EM203 PI to um, the Steyr SL40 on their improved rifle. So this has not become standard, though it was trialled there. Um, and there were trials um, for UK MOD in the early years of the 2000s, which is how we ended up with this example. Right, let's put this back on... The, well, I was going to say on the weapon, they're both weapons. Let's put the weapon on the weapon. So you can weapon while you weapon. Try not to descend too far into meme territory. But <laughs> Okay, so very easy to, to take off and put back on, as you've seen. Um, it doesn't look quite right without the MP5 magazine on there. Now, um, probably worth, actually, just showing you. So this is an inert round. 40 millimeter by 46, um, has no primer, has no explosive filler of any kind. It's a so simple case, pop it to, out to the side, slot that in, and you'll see that it's against the extractor, that plunger there, which can be switched from left to right, is your extractor, and then closing it against the breech face should. There we go lock the round in place. You can then fire it with your double action trigger as I demonstrated earlier. So it's a um, simple theory, simple case of uh, pressing the release lever. Uh, from this angle, it's a little awkward. There we go. So you can see that, that that spring loaded extractor gives you uh, enough force to, or, or provides enough force to just pop the round out. It won't send it flying out like an ejector shotgun or something. You will pluck out the empty case with this <laughs> the main explode, explosive uh, portion obviously having gone down range. So the case is actually only this short, hence 46 millimeters. So you pluck that out, throw it away, load in the next one and, and away you go. Obviously you need some sort of load bearing equipment that's set up for carrying multiples of these rounds. So there we are. Uh, a nice, I always enjoy a crossover between um, real life solutions, or uh, albeit ones that um, Work, didn't see uh, any sort of widespread adoption and um, sort of popular culture life of, of firearms and in this case um, under barrel grenade launchers and I think this is always although it doesn't quite match the configuration of the, the half-life gun it's just, as soon as I saw this thing on the wall uh, a number of years ago that's exactly where my brain went and I suspect a lot of you did as well. Exciting news for those of you who are not aware of our upcoming weekend firearms uh, event here at the Royal Armouries in Leeds. Um, as part of that, we're doing uh, What Is This Weapon Live, which is really quite exciting to be a part of and hopefully to attend as well. Um, on the same day, so 11th of March, we're going to be having a meet and greet with me as part of the event. And we've actually sold out the first batch of tickets, but the good news is that we are releasing a load more. So at time of recording, there are tickets available for that meet and greet. I'd love to say hello to some of you. Um, and I look forward to doing that on the 11th of March.